Hello, I'm Irene Natividad, President of the Global Summit of Women. Today is April 23rd, and this is the day when we were supposed to begin our 30th anniversary summit. Unfortunately, because of the coronavirus, we have rescheduled for October 8 to 10, and clearly I'm hoping to see some of you there. I hope you're doing well. I know time is heavy in our hands, and so I thought it might be helpful if I shared with you a skills building session on persuasive presentation. And you ask, well, why did you choose that topic? Well, because in the 30 years that I've been organizing the summit, I get resumes of exceptional women with great expertise from all over the world. And then inevitably, from time to time, I get somebody who doesn't know how to speak, who speaks too fast, too slowly, reads her entire speech, never looks up at the audience, speaks in a monotone, has 30 slides where she, she should have had 10 or maybe even five, and worse yet, reads her slide. And so I think it's important for us to get a few pointers on how we can do that better. You say, why? Because those who are able to articulate, those who are able to convey persuasively, concisely to audiences, small or large, whether it's to your banker, funder, an audience in a workshop or in a large conference, what it is that you want them to do so that you can promote your agenda, all the better. All studies show that articulate people who can say what it is that they're about or their product do better than others. And aren't we lucky? Today, we have Mariette Rupps Donnelly, an Australian actress, award-winning actress, who has given up herself to others to enable them to persuade in a way that is effective. She is now an effective coach a much sought after coach to executives who want to be able to speak and present better. So let me present to you, Mariette. Wow, <laughs> this is so exciting, isn't it? I have got to meet so many of you at the Global Summit for Women, or Global Summit of Women, I should say. And now I get to have a conversation with you virtually. It's a wonderful experience and a real opportunity. And I say opportunity advisedly. Any time we have the chance to present or to have a meeting or an interview or even a virtual coffee, it's an opportunity to influence an outcome. Now, it might be a small outcome, you know, to open a discussion or encourage someone to look at an idea differently. Or it might be a larger outcome to encourage someone to take action or to change. When we are looking at influencing, we need to understand some of the techniques of persuasion. Now, I know that when you are preparing a presentation, you think a lot about what you want people to know. And then you'll think about what you want people to do with what they know, won't you? Certainly my clients do this. But I ask how many of you really think about what you want people to feel about what you're saying? You see, action is not taken just because people know something. Action is taken because people know something and they feel something positive about it and then they will do something. Doing happens at the intersection of knowing and feeling and persuasion is all about feelings. So what do we need? Well, we need people to feel they can trust us, they can believe in us, and to do that, we have to show up with confidence and presence. We need to claim the space. Now, presence is made up of four components. Physical presence, vocal presence, intellectual presence, and emotional presence. The core of this is physical presence. Now, you know this. <laughs> Mum's been telling you this for years. Stand up straight. That's physical presence. Mum also said, put your shoulders back. Well, that information is not quite so great because it makes your neck stick out. But certainly, stand up straight, ground your feet, and widen your shoulders. That's the basis of physical presence. 
but nerves get in the way of good physical presence and good vocal presence. Now we all get nervous. It's part of the game. And the more senior you get, the more leadership roles you have, the more complex the problems are, the more difficult the crises are to manage, and so you still get nervous. We have to learn to manage our nerves. We manage them by making sure our head talk is all very positive. We manage them by exercise, by getting rid of some of that excess energy. We manage them by loosening up tension, and we manage them by breathing. So now I know you are sitting there watching this and you are not necessarily going to stand on your feet for me as you would in a workshop or a presentation. But we're in a virtual world now and this is just as important in that virtual world as it is when you are standing in front of a group presenting. So sitting in your chair now, I want you to lengthen your spine. Now by lengthening, I don't mean to push your chest forward. I mean to lengthen as if you've got a hook just between your shoulder blades and that hook pulls you up. At the same time, I want you to feel your, your backside uh, grounded in the chair and your feet firmly planted on the floor. That gives you grounding. So you're going up and down at the same time. And widen your shoulders all the way to the walls. Grounded, lengthened, widened. That's good physical presence. When you are nervous, one of the quickest things you can do is shake. Shake your nerves off. So give yourself a really good shake while you're sitting there. And then we need to be able to breathe really well. Now, breathing is the core of this. Breathing makes us uh, appear authentic to an audience. Good, deep breathing. I don't want to see your shoulders move up when you breathe in. To help you with that, I want you to breathe all your air out first, like this. Shh. Now wait. Just wait. And the air will come in. And it comes in deeply, right down. Try it again. Shh. Wait. You will breathe or you die. <laughs> and the air comes in deeply in your body. Now that will center you and help control your nerves. But it also supports your voice. Good, strong vocal presence is very important for confidence, for the appearance of confidence, and for people to believe what you're saying and trust what you're saying. So the air is to come out under your voice. You breathe in and the air comes out as you speak. Try saying, hey, for me with the airflow. Can you try that? Hey, good. Now there's a little exercise, I put it in the notes. Hey, he, hi, ho, who. We'll do each of them and then we'll let the air flow under, take a breath, sorry, in between and let the air flow out as we are saying the sound. Breathe in, hey. Breathe in, he. Breathe in, hi. Breathe in, ho. Breathe in, ooh. Excellent. Can you feel the airflow? Air will make your voice more resonant and it will make it stronger. So once we get our presence or our physical and vocal presence in place and our emotional presence in place with our breathing, then we need to look at helping people engage with us and relate to us. So I'm expecting that you will prepare and practice. Make sure you prepare so that your messaging is very clear, very concise, and very relevant to the people you are speaking to. That means they will listen. Now, this is super important when you're working virtually, because if you're not prepared to be clear, concise, and relevant, chances are you'll ramble. And this, doesn't, this happens no matter what position you have. I've seen leaders do this, big leaders do this. You will ramble. And on, on camera, rambling is incredibly noticeable. So practice to prepare to be relevant and concise and clear. Then ask questions. When you're in a presentation, one of the easiest way of engaging an audience is to ask some questions. Sometimes you'll ask them questions you want them to answer, and other times they're just rhetorical questions. You'll add little things like, 
Do you think so? Or what do you think, Anne? That's the way you see it, isn't it? Little things like that at the end of a sentence will help the engagement of an audience. Questions are really important. And then we need to think about being physically and vocally expressive and engaging. Mm. Now, when you're physically expressive, it has to connect very much to the words you are saying. I have seen people throw their arms out all over the place with no meaning at all. Physical expression means you paint pictures, paint lovely pictures that uh, reflect what, the, what you are saying, reflect the words you are saying. Now on camera you need to keep those pictures within this camera frame. You can't extend your arms out, but of course in a um, big presentation in a conference you can go for it, big, big, big gestures if you like. Now vocally, there's a very simple little tip you can use to give yourself more expression. It's called topping. When you are, when we, when we pre prepare a presentation, we're very, we're very likely to just say it all on the one. When we do this, it's hard to get engagement from an audience. When we top, we go up in pitch a little bit at the beginning of a sentence or the beginning of a new idea that helps prick up the ears of the people listening to us. I'll, I'll give you an example. If I was to say to you, no topping, in today's presentation I want to talk to you about presence. Presence is made up of four components, physical presence, vocal presence, intellectual presence and emotional presence. Okay, now I'll do it with topping. Today I'd like to talk to you about presence. Presence is made up of four components, physical presence, vocal presence, intellectual presence and emotional presence. You see how much more interesting that becomes. Now we do topping all the time. We do it in conversation. When we say hello to someone, we don't say hello or welcome. We say hello, welcome all the time. And it's in any language. Bonjour, guten tag, ni hao, xin chao, salam, selamat datang. We say it, we top whenever we say hello. So every time you hear yourself saying hello or welcome to someone in whatever language, then notice how you are topping. It's a way of practicing. Now the most important piece of this to me is the ability to create connection with an audience. When speakers are first starting out, I often teach them to be more enthusiastic. Enthusiasm is catching, and if you are enthusiastic, then the audience will give back to you. But that's only one piece of the puzzle. The next layer of this is a thing called generosity of self, or generosity of, of spirit. Be generous with your information, be generous with your emotion, be generous with you, be generous with your voice. And when you do that, it touches something in people and they will give back to you. Generosity is another layer. So enthusiasm can often just be contained in your own little world, but generosity reaches out to an audience. The third part of this is a little more complex. I was asked a question at the last Global Summit of Women and uh, it was around persuasion and it was around the energy that we use. So I've decided to include it. This topic of the quality of the energy that we put out to an audience is quite a large one. So I'm honing it down to two particular aspects, direct energy and flexible energy. Business is done in a very direct energy way. We give directives, we set goals, we have a process. We're very clear with our messaging. That's how we get business done. However, persuasion is not direct. Think about the word. We don't persuade, we persuade. We don't influence, we influence. And we involve and we include. So in order to be persuasive, you need quite a bit of flexible energy. Directives are important, you give a directive, but you need context and meaning and all, and empathy. And all those things are flexible energy. 
Now the ability to mix this up is where the true power lies. So you might start being flexible. You might say something like, oh, I'm so impressed with the way we have collaborated as a team to get this project happening. And I'd love to see this collaboration to continue because now we have a clear goal. We have to focus and push through to the end. So I have moved then from the flexible to the direct and it becomes much more powerful inclusive to direction. So there's a number of little things in there that you can do to build your persuasiveness when you present. You can't do them all at once. You pull them in like little threads. Okay, you start with confidence and presence, physical presence, vocal presence, managing your nerves. You move on then to making sure your messages are clear, preparing, practicing, asking questions, using some physical and vocal expression, and then connection. Make sure you're enthusiastic and energized. Make sure you're giving of yourself. And think about the energy you use. Is it all the one energy or are you mixing it up? It's the quality of energy that touches people's emotion. When you present and you want to persuade, you're not just dealing with what you want people to know or what you want people to do. You are dealing with how you want people to feel. And really, in today's age, that is so important. Thank you. Thank you, Mariette. That was exceptional and generous of you. As you were speaking, I'm pulling myself up, widening my shoulders, <laughs> and doing the breathing exercises. That may seem trivial, but actually it isn't. So thank you for giving us the physical infrastructure for being able to present well. You are indeed generous of your time. Thank you everyone for joining us today. We hope to bring you some more of such skill building sessions that you could always use at work. Mariette generously is providing some of these tips in a written form, so email us and we will give them to you so that you have them in hand and you will remember the expert that you heard, whom you heard, and who can be available at any time. So thank you from the Global Summit of Women. We hope to see you and hear you again. <laughs>